Hello everybody and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be doing 2019 F equals MA exam B problem number 17. The problem reads, would the answer to the previous question, namely the amount of time to return to the starting position, be the same for a uniform disk with the same coefficient of friction launched with the same initial conditions? Now recall the last question asked for the amount of time the hoop would take to return to its starting position with the same initial conditions, v0, angular velocity, 3v0 over r, and the coefficient of kinetic friction as mu. We could solve this problem using process of elimination without actually finding the time it takes for the uniform disk to return to its starting position, but for the sake of the learning experience, we will. From problem 16, we got two equations describing the motion of the disk. We have the first equation relating the velocities, vf equals v0 minus mu gt. And we have the second equation relating angular velocities, omega f equals omega 0 plus mu m g r over i times t. And if you want to know how we got to these equations, you can watch our previous video on problem number 16. The initial conditions basically stated that the initial velocity was v0 and omega 0 was equal to negative 3 v0 over r. And if you want to know why the initial angular velocity was negative, you could look at our previous video to find out. Now we can plug in i for a disk, which is 1 half mr squared, into our second equation. We get omega f is equal to omega 0 plus mu m g r over 1 half m r squared times t. Now just as in the previous problem, we multiply both sides of this equation by r because omega f is equal to v f when the disk starts rolling without slipping. Omega f r equals v f which is equal to plugging in v0 equals negative 3 v0 over r. We get negative 3 v0 and canceling out the r's from the previous equation, we get plus 2 mu g t. So we end up with this equation and this equation. What exactly do we do with these equations? Well, remember, we want to find out the amount of time it takes for the disk to return to its starting position. The motion of this disk can be split into two parts. The first part is when the disk starts accelerating at a constant rate, and the second part is when the disk rolls at a constant velocity. Depending on what VF is, the point at which the disk starts rolling without slipping could be before it returns to its starting position or after. If VF is less than negative V0, where less means more negative, then the disk has already returned to its starting position before the disk has started rolling without slipping. If VF is greater than negative V0, where greater means from negative V0 to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity, then the disk has not yet reached its starting position yet, and we will need to further solve for the time it takes for the disk to roll at constant velocity. So because of that, we need to solve for V of F, and to solve for V of F, we need to solve for t first because we eventually have to find the time it takes. So since these two equations are both equal to vf, we can set them equal to each other. We get v0 minus mu gt equals negative 3v0 plus 2 mu gt. And of course we add 3v0 to both sides and add mu gt to both sides to solve for t. We get 4v0 equals 3 mu gt. And solving for t, we get 4v0 over 3 mu g. We can plug this in into our first equation, vf equals v0 minus mu gt, and we get vf equals v0 minus mu g times 4v0 over 3 mu g, and we can simplify this and get vf equals negative v0 over 3. Since vf is greater than negative v0, the disk has not yet returned to its starting position. That means we want to find the current position of the disk at time equals 4v0 over 3 mu g, so we can figure out how long it takes for the disk to return to its starting position. So we can use our good old kinematic equation, vf squared minus v0 squared equals 2a delta x. Because we know vf, we know v0, we know the acceleration, so we can solve for delta x. And once we solve for delta x, we can simply divide by vf and figure out the time that it takes for the ball to roll at constant velocity back to its starting position. Plugging vf in, we get v0 squared over 9 minus v0 squared, which is equal to negative 8 v0 squared over 9, and that's equal to 
to a, where a is equal to negative mu g for reasons explained in the previous video, delta x. And solving for this, we get delta x is equal to 4v0 squared over 9 mu g. So the time the ball rolls at a constant velocity is simply equal to delta x over vf. And after rolling through the algebra, you can do that yourself, you eventually get 4v0 over 3 mu g. That means that the total time it takes for the ball to return to its starting position would just be equal to the time it takes for the ball to start rolling without slipping plus the time it takes for the ball to return to its starting position, which is 8 v0 over 3 mu g. Now this is our final answer for the amount of time it would take for the disc to return to its starting position. Looking back at our question, we see that it wants us to figure out which one is true. Now, once we've figured out all the times and the final velocity, we can finally answer this question. The first answer choice says that it does take the same amount of time for the disk to return to its starting position. Now that's wrong because 8 v0 over 3 mu g is not equal to 2 v0 over mu g, as we got from the previous question. B, no, because the torque due to friction is larger for the hoop. Now we actually don't have enough information about the question to figure out whether or not the torque is the same. And AAPT let us know that they realized their mistake and did not tell the masses, but we can assume that the masses are the same because it says the same initial conditions, and we quickly see that B is false. This is because the torque is equal to the frictional force times r, and the frictional force is just mu mg, so the torque is mu mg r. However, mu is the same, m is the same, g is the same, and r is the same. That means the torque is the same, so b is wrong. c, the disc never returns to its starting position, while well, it does in time 8v0 over 3 mu g, so that's wrong. D, no, because the disc stops slipping too soon. That is correct because the disc stops slipping at time 4v0 over 3 mu g, and that is less than 2v0 over 3 mu g, so this is correct. And E, there's not enough information to decide. Well, we do have information to decide, so the answer is D, and we're done. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more F equals MA videos.